also in working with adults on the autism spectrum over the years, I've noticed a prominent theme, and I'm just going to refer to it as the anxiety, meltdown, guilt, self-punishment theme. And this is a cycle that many adults with Asperger's, ASD level 1, high-functioning autism, whatever we're calling it nowadays, they've experienced this in many cases since childhood. So in a nutshell, the cycle starts with anxiety, which in turn leads to a meltdown, which then leads to the individual feeling guilty for acting out his anxiety in the form of anger or rage. And then this ends up with the person punishing himself due to repeated relationship failures that result from this destructive cycle. So let's look at each of those points in Anxiety was the first step in this cycle. So unfortunately, it's very common for people on the autism spectrum to f experience more than their fair share of anxiety. And to make matters worse, they're not really sure how to manage their anxiety. So people on the spectrum are particularly prone to anxiety disorders in general as a consequence of the social demands made on them. In many cases, any social contact can generate anxiety as to how to start, maintain, and end the activity or conversation. And changes to daily routine can exacerbate anxiety, as can sensory sensitivities. Many of my clients have reported feeling anxious for no apparent reason at all. And uh, some of them tend to take life too seriously, take others' behavior and comments too personally, and generally consider themselves to be somewhat of a worry wart. In other words, they're chronically worrying that something bad will happen or that they won't meet certain expectations. They won't be able to make their spouse happy. It doesn't matter what they say or do. It's never good enough and so on. So they're chronically worrying. And if they're not worrying about family life, maybe they're worrying about work life. So there's the anxiety piece in this anxiety, meltdown, guilt, self-punishment cycle. The second piece of the puzzle here was the meltdown. So as anxiety, whatever its cause, builds up and builds up and builds up, eventually the dam breaks, so to speak, usually over something very small. It's the straw that breaks the camel's back. This is called a meltdown. Under severe enough stress, any normally calm and collected individual may become out of control even to the point of being verbally abusive. That's true. But autistic individuals experience repeated meltdowns in which tension mounts until there is an explosive release. And the meltdown is not always directed at others. Sometimes it's directed toward the self. In other words, self-injury and in worst case scenarios, of course, suicide. Adults with ASD level 1 who experience meltdowns are often perceived by others as always being angry. Rage may be a common reaction experienced when coming to terms with problems in employment, relationships, friendships, and other areas of life affected by autism spectrum disorders. And there is often an on-off quality to this rage, where the person may be calm minutes later after a meltdown, while people around the person that just melted down are stunned for hours, if not days. Neurotypical spouses often struggle to understand these meltdowns with resentment and bitterness often building up over time, which is totally understandable. And in some cases, the individual on the autism spectrum may not acknowledge he has trouble with rage and will blame others for provoking him. Of course, there's going to be hundreds of examples of how meltdowns can play out. But for the sake of this discussion here, let's use the following example. Let's say that you had a rough day at work. You maybe masked all day. You kept yourself composed. You stuffed your emotion just to make it through. You maintained your composure, but it took a lot of work to get that done, and it was exhausting. So you get home, and at an unconscious level, perhaps, you take it out on your wife. Let's say your neurotypical wife makes a comment that hits you wrong for some reason, and then you explode. So in other words, you kind of take out your stressful day on your wife unintentionally, perhaps. And that is the straw that broke the camel's back. Now we get to the next phase of this cycle, which is the guilt phase. Using this particular scenario that I just described, if that scenario plays itself out numerous times over several years, the person on the autism spectrum may come to believe that he's a victim of his emotions. In this case, work-related stress expressed in the form of misplaced anger toward his wife and perhaps other family members. But not only does he feel like a victim of circumstances, he also feels an element of guilt and remorse for hurting the people that he knows he's supposed to love. And he may have tried numerous times to avoid repeating this scenario, but to no avail, because he still has work-related stress, he still hasn't figured out a way to deal with the stress at work in a functional, non-destructive way, and still carries that stress home with him when he walks through the front door. Now we're at the fourth and final step 
of this cycle, which is self-punishment. So as a result of repeated social failures, in our example, it would be numerous negative encounters with his wife, the individual on the spectrum may come to the conclusion that he doesn't deserve love, doesn't deserve compassion, doesn't deserve a peaceful lifestyle in general. So then he may do destructive things to punish himself. For example, uh, he might beat upon himself with a negative self-talk, drinking, drug use, overeating, isolation, and possibly separation or divorce. Self-punishment is a dysfunctional method for reducing feelings of guilt. Now, guilt is supposed to be a pro-social emotion. In other words, it functions to preserve important relationships. But many people on the autism spectrum who experience repeated exposures to the cycle that I'm describing have unresolved guilt, which prevents them from enjoying life and thriving emotionally. Now, self-punishment tends to serve a dual purpose. One, it relieves internal feelings of guilt, and two, it impacts how others perceive us. So by engaging in self-punishment or costly apologies, the autistic individual demonstrates that he's willing to harm himself in some way to even the score, so to speak, with those he has wronged, therefore restoring his reputation as a fair person. Now there is a fifth and final step, which is just anxiety again. So we've gone from anxiety to meltdown to guilt to self-punishment, full circle back to anxiety again. This cycle can feel like being stuck in a perpetual nightmare if it continues on long enough. Months or even years of experiencing a bunch of negative emotions, stress, frustration, anger, rage, guilt, etc. can make relationships so problematic that in some cases the better option becomes living alone and perhaps even avoiding human contact as much as possible. But here's why this causes anxiety. Because even people on the autism spectrum are social creatures by nature. Therefore, living a life of solitude carries its own element of anxiety because people need other people. So if you get so frustrated with life and with yourself that you just get divorced and you just try to avoid people as much as possible, you have laid your own trap. Because again, you're a social creature by nature. You need people whether you want them in your life or not. And when you avoid people, when you go to great lengths to avoid people, you are creating additional anxiety. You're not removing anxiety.